Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy 30 days of unlimited social messaging, 10 gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, and 1,000 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $100. Keep your number when you switch to St. Kitts' most reliable LTE network. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. In the top stories, nurses recognized on International Nurses Day. Protocols proposed for reopening Antigua and Barbuda's tourism industry and Philippines reopens its skies to incoming international flights. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Today is Tuesday, May 12, 2020. I am your presenter, Shaira Flanders, nationally. Junior Minister of Health in the Nevis Allen Administration, Honorable Hazel Brandy Williams, says, As we observe International Nurses Day on May 12, 2020, we stand with the rest of the world to salute the contribution of nurses everywhere. She was at the time delivering an address to mark the special occasion and encouraged all to remember that nurses are on the forefront of the ever-changing healthcare environment during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. During this public health crisis, nurses play and continue to play a critical role in managing and mitigating the spread of the disease. Our nurses remain on the front line of this response. They have seen the reality of this infectious disease and the global loss of life, yet they continue to deliver compassionate and competent care. The health minister highlighted how nurses have been doing their part to educate our people about preventative measures that can help to curtail the spread of the novel coronavirus. Our nurses have taken the time to provide us with useful information to remain safe during this pandemic. Information such as the importance of frequent hand washing, cough and sneeze etiquette, keeping frequently touched surfaces clean, and staying at home. They continue to highlight the importance of physical distancing while encouraging persons to maintain those social connections via the use of various social media platforms. She said that it is extremely important to show love and support for our nurses while they maneuver during this challenging time and use the opportunity to thank all nurses where the quote active retired or otherwise for their service. International Nurses Day is being celebrated under the theme, Nurses, a voice to lead, nursing the world to health. Meanwhile, coughing in your elbow is essential for protecting other persons from contracting the coronavirus, but it isn't as effective as wearing your face mask. This was highlighted by the Medical Chief of Staff, Dr. Cameron Wilkinson, during his appearance on the National Emergency Operations Center, or NEOC COVID-19 daily briefing for May 11th. Dr. Wilkinson was at the time responding to a question posed by the media where health and safety of persons who greet others by bumping elbows together was questioned. They are coughing into their elbows. He explained that the health officials initially encouraged greeting with the elbow before the need to have all persons wear their mask in public as a means of preventing the spread of respiratory droplets that can increase the risk of catching COVID-19. Dr. Wilkinson added that in the best interest of one's health, persons can opt out of greeting altogether and remain six feet apart to adhere to social and physical distancing protocols. In other news, while explaining why there is no rush to reopen St. Kitts and Nevis' borders to non-essential traffic, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris said that, quote, opening our borders prematurely would put at risk all our collective efforts to date and will bring much pain, end quote. Only cargo flights, cargo ships, commercial courier flights, emergency medical flights and emergency flights approved by the airport authorities are being permitted entry into St. Kitts and Nevis. 
Speaking on the matter on May 9th during WinFM's Inside the News, the Prime Minister indicated that his administration's cautious approach is being guided by the advice of medical professionals. He said, quote, at this particular moment in time, the medical advice and all the professional advice we have is that our borders should remain closed for the foreseeable future. He continued, quote, when we see the deaths that are taking place and the count keeps increasing in New York, in New Jersey, in Florida, and elsewhere in the United States of America and in the UK, I could appreciate why people would quickly understand the need for our borders to be closed and that we should not rush to open them, end quote. So far in St. Kitts and Nevis, there have been no coronavirus-related hospitalizations and no deaths from the virus. On to news on the regional scene, Antigua and Barbuda's Minister for Tourism has outlined a proposed protocol list for safely reopening the tourism industry. The Honorable Henry Charles Fernandez says these were necessary to assure locals that every reasonable measure has been taken to limit importation of COVID-19 cases into the country. Here's more. The Antigua Barbuda Tourism Authority, ABTA, today hosted its tourism industry meeting on reopening Antigua and Barbuda for tourism. Presenters included the country's Minister for Tourism, Charles Fernandez, the ABTA CEO, Colin James, and industry experts from the United States of America, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Minister Fernandez shared with participants the results of intense meetings from the OECS task force which addressed tourism recovery. He represented this country alongside Chief Medical Officer Rhonda Seeley Thomas. Fernandez offered the following proposals regarding inbound tourists. For visitors, each passenger who intends to travel to Antigua Barbuda must have had a COVID-19 test within 48 hours of embarking on his or her trip. CARFA has given the assurance that before the end of May, rapid response tests will be 90% accurate. For airport personnel, in order to keep them safe, digital immigration cards are to be used, immigration boots are to be removed from departures, and the temperature checks are to be performed on every passenger. As it relates to taxi operators, training is to be offered on how to keep drivers and passengers safe. Specific policies for operation will be communicated. As it relates to hotels and other accommodation providers, more hand-washing stations are to be implemented. There will be no guest buffets. Room service is to be encouraged. And all front-of-house staff is to be offered rapid tests. Uniforms are to be laundered and kept on site. Regarding tour operators, strict social distancing guidelines for numbers allowed on catamarans and buses will apply. Frontline staff are to be tested as well. The minister states that a foreseeable slow start to industry recovery will yield the opportunity to get things right. He is hopeful, however, that rapid testing and robust treatment options will be available to combat COVID-19 by October this year, when the season is expected to fully kick off. He also adds that a meeting with OECS ministers of health should better inform the suggested protocols going forward. For ABS News, I'm Ursul Charles Jr. Bank of Jamaica or BOJ Governor Richard Bald is promising that Jamaica will be off the European Union blacklist of countries that pose financial risk to the bloc because of anti-money laundering and terrorism financing shortfalls. Jamaica is among 12 countries the EU on Thursday added to its list of states that pose financial risks because of anti-money laundering and terrorism financing shortfalls. The other countries added are the Bahamas, Barbados, Botswana, Cambodia, Ghana, Mauritius, Mongolia, Myanmar, Nicaragua, Panama and Zimbabwe. In taking note of the intended blacklisting of Jamaica, Governor Biles told journalists at a virtual news briefing on Thursday, rest assured, Jamaica wants to get off of that great list and the Bank of Jamaica is committed to leading that process. In 2021, mark my words that we will be taken off the EU blacklisting, end quote. Governor Biles pointed out that the BOJ's recently overhauled regulatory regime for electronic retail payment system, dubbed the FinTech Regulatory Sandbox, would assist in Jamaica getting off the blacklist. And as we move on to news on the international scene, flights can land in the Philippines capital again after the government reopened its airport. Al Jazeera's Jamila Allen Dogan reports on that story. These foreign visitors are now able to fly out of the Philippines after waiting for over a month. 
many airlines began cutting flights in March. And a week ago, Manila's main airport was closed. I was going back around March, but it got delayed, and right now I'm going back. I'm feeling very good, good about my government, and I'm very thankful for them, and also Philippines government. The government temporarily halted flights as it struggled to speed up testing for coronavirus and ran out of room in quarantine facilities. Since the start of the pandemic, thousands of Filipinos have been returning to the Philippines. Philippine embassies are used to periodic emergency mass repatriation. But with this influx, the government has had to medically test and house tens of thousands of people. And it admits resources are stretched. The government says the flight restrictions will be in effect until early next month. And this hopes to ensure that the airport will be able to handle around 400 passengers a day. That is the estimated capacity under the current lockdown. There are over 10 million Filipino workers overseas, around 10% of the country's population. That's why the impact of the global pandemic is felt so deeply here. Justoni Bainosa borrowed money to come to Manila from his home province of Cebu to start to work as a seafarer. He was waiting to be assigned to a ship when the lockdown began. Our food is rationed every day. We don't even know if we can go abroad. The Philippines provides a quarter of the workforce of the global maritime industry. Since the pandemic started, more than 20,000 have returned. A majority now stranded and jobless. Filipino workers tell us they are all too aware of the dangers of the coronavirus. But what they fear more is the uncertainty of not being able to provide for their families. Jamela Alindogan, Al Jazeera, Manila. A group of fishermen who say they were exploited while working on Chinese fishing vessels have returned home in Indonesia after the death of four crew members. Here's more. After 13 months working on the high seas, these Indonesian fishermen are relieved to come home. But some of their fellow crew members never got that chance. At least four died while working for the Dalian Ocean Fishing Company in recent months. One died in hospital, but others died on board the Chinese vessels. The fishermen say their bodies were thrown into the Pacific Ocean. Crew members told Al Jazeera what they endured on the ship. Our salary was meant to be $300 a month, but in reality I received $120 for the whole 13 months. Our food was the same as fish bait for tuna. It was really mean. The men say they worked around 18 hours each day, catching fish including endangered species and cutting the fins off sharks. In reality, sometimes we had to work a shift of 30 hours or more. Whatever fish we caught, we asked, should we process it or not? If they said yes, we did it. As the months went on, the fishermen say one of the hardest parts of the job was watching their fellow crew members fall ill and die. I feel so free now, free from hell. The company did not respond to Al Jazeera's questions. Indonesian authorities are speaking with the men and say they will launch a joint investigation with Beijing into what happened. We condemn the inhumane treatment experienced by the Indonesian crew while working on Chinese vessels. The government is very committed to solving this issue by improving regulations. Millions of Indonesians are employed in the fisheries industry and exploitation is rampant. Most of them are young men recruited by agencies in their hometowns and many don't know what they're signing up for. Advocates say it's not the regulation that's the problem, but the lack of action by the government to protect the rights of these young workers. So what we need to do actually is the law enforcement. So we don't, we don't need to, uh, to establish a new regulations. He says until that happens, more young men will risk their lives on the high seas. Jessica Washington, Al Jazeera, Jakarta. And now for the weather. Present weather is fair. A moderate breeze of 13 miles per hour is blowing from the southeast. Today's temperature will peak at 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Expect partly cloudy skies with a 20% or a slight chance of showers today and tonight. Sunset today will be at 6.34 p.m. And the sun is expected to rise tomorrow at 5.40 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the ZIZ Midday Newscast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your presenter. Shaira Flanders.
Have a good one. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy 30 days of unlimited social messaging, 10 gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, and 1,000 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $100. Keep your number when you switch to St. Kitts' most reliable LTE network. Switch to Flow. It only gets better.